Hello everyone. Problem statement or statement of the problem is a, often an integral part of research reports and also research proposals and research theses. This presentation is about the what, why and how of the problem statement. In many cases, junior researchers and student researchers find it difficult to write a useful problem statement. So let us first begin with what a problem statement is. Well, we can see here that a problem statement or statement of the problem uh, consists of these two important words problem and statement. And so we can define a problem statement or statement of the problem as a brief and concise account <clears throat> or a declaration <clears throat> or a report of the problem or issue that is being investigated in a research study. So a research study, whether it's a research thesis or a research paper or a proposal for a research report um, generally will begin with a problem statement or a statement of the problem that is actually a brief concise account or declaration or description of the problem that is under investigation in this particular study. Generally, a part of the research thesis or research proposal. So in most cases or rather in all cases, research theses and research proposals have a statement of the problem or a statement that actually has described and discussed uh, the problem precisely and concisely. Now why is it, the second question is, why is it that a problem statement is an integral part of the research reports? Well, the problem statement is part of the research report because it gives an initial and concise insight into the issue or the problem being investigated. So uh, the, the problem statement actually responds to our questions such as what is the issue or the problem that is being explored in this particular research. And second, what is its background? So what is the background of the issue that we are exploring? The third question that, that the problem of the statement responds to and because of which problem statement is important is that uh, the question why is the issue being investigated? In other words, there is some kind of rationale given in the problem statement. And so overall this is actually a brief knowledge gap identification. Um, so knowledge gap is identified uh, because of which we are actually conducting this particular study. So this is, these are the reasons or the rationale behind including problem statements in our research studies. Now we move on to the how of the research state of the problem statement. Generally, there are three parts in the problem statement and these parts include a brief background. So, because the problem statement, statement is not an extensive document, it is generally a short document and precise and brief document. So that's why there is a brief ba background. The beginning of the problem statement is in the form of a brief background, which is actually a few sentences to a paragraph, in some cases a few sentences in shorter reports and maybe in some longer reports such as PhD research thesis, the problem state could, statement could, be, could consist of, uh, some, of some paragraphs depending on the scope of the study, the nature of the report. Then the second thing is uh, after giving this brief background um, to the issue that is being explored. The second part of it is the gap identification. So what is missing in our understanding of the issue or the problem? In other words, why is this study 
needed. So this is something, this is a question that is also responded to in the problem statement. And then the aims of the current study. So the what, why, and how of the current study. So you give a, a, a background to your study very briefly. Then you identified gap, which actually means why is this particular study needed. And then the aims of the current study. So what is it that we will get at the end of the current study? That is something um, that is included. And so a few sentences to a few paragraphs, as I said in the beginning, that in some cases, in most cases, statement problems are concise and they are not very lengthy uh, parts of the research report. So generally they should consist of some sentences. In some cases they could be a bit longer, including um, a few paragraphs, but they are generally not very extensive or extended documents or parts of the research reports. Here I am giving you an example of how, like this is one possible example of how to actually write um, a concise problem statement. Um, so I, as you can see, I have, I have actually uh, written this particular problem statement and divided into these three paragraphs, which actually is are the three parts that are generally they generally a problem statement consists of. The first part is the kind of introduction or background to it. The, se <clears throat> the second part is uh, actually going, taking us to the issue. And the third one is actually um, a description of short brief description of the aims of the particular study that, that we have conducted or the, that we aim to conduct. So the first one, um, let us just read this problem statement so that you can have an idea of how clearly, precisely and concisely it presents the issue or the problem that is being explored in this particular uh, study. So, reflective practice has been an important educational concept employed in many educational programs across disciplines, including teacher education. Many initial teacher education programs aim at developing reflective, uh, uh, prospective teachers as reflective practitioners. So that's the background that I gave. So I introduced the concept on which I'm actually uh, working, uh, on which I actually intend to conduct this particular study. Now, problematizing, so what is the problem? Um, and here I'm giving the background of the problem. Despite its ubiquity in teacher education programs, there has been little consensus regarding the connotations, aims, and outcomes of reflective practice as a teacher education concept. This is partly because of the multiplicity of definitional connotations that have been associated with the concept. In the absence of any comprehensive agreed upon definition, the concept has been, has often been turned into a slogan, lacking clearly laid out outcomes, aims, implementation mechanisms, and measurable outcomes. So, now, so what? So the current study therefore aims to explore reflective practice in terms of its aims, implementation, mechanisms, and measurable outcomes, if any in teacher education programs. The study also aims to explore possible ways and means for the incorporation of reflective practice in teacher education programs with clearer aims, implementation mechanisms, and outcomes. So as you can see in this short problem statement, what I did was I gave an introduction to the concept of reflective practice then I gave a background of the issue, which is actually the multiplicity um, or the, the, the difficulty of reflective practice in terms of its connotation and implementation um, in educational programs, especially teacher education programs. 
and then uh, on the basis of this particular background um, the reason or the rationale for conducting this particular study in order to have better insights into the connotations and implementations of of reflection so this is uh, this is one example of uh, i sh i must uh, hope of a concise problem statement there are there are numerous other examples of much better problem statements